In today's video, we have multiple low pressure systems that we're going to be tracking, some of which are very, very strong, including one happening right now that is already down into the 980s, so a very, very large system. We have severe weather ongoing and happening throughout the upcoming pattern, some snowfall, some colder air on the way, but a big warm up that we're tracking in the long range that could bring us back into the hot weather for the central and eastern states. Let's just dive into things, and as we're taking a look at the current conditions, we have this 988 currently over eastern Nebraska right now, and this is featuring uh, severe weather here on the southern and eastern front of this low pressure system from southern Minnesota there through Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, down through Texas. This is all going to be spreading eastward over the course of the next few hours and into the next couple of days. So let's just track this through tomorrow afternoon and we see that this is all moving eastward. The low is weakening down to a 996 over Wisconsin, so a little bit weaker by this point. But still, the threat of severe weather is looming from Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, down through Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, even stretching back westward through Texas and even some of northern Georgia there. Uh, we have another area of precipitation here for the Mid-Atlantic where I wouldn't be surprised if we see some severe weather alongside this as well. So definitely a whole lot going on. Meanwhile, some snowfall back west for states like, uh, in, like uh, Idaho, better yet, all those I states just mess me up, Montana, northern Wyoming as well, and that is heavier in some spots. This is all made possible due to some cooler weather that has kind of spread southward through these western regions. And this is a lot of what is bringing this warmth for the east. We talk about this all the time on the channel. It probably gets pretty repetitive, but when this cold air spreads for the west, it really creates this imbalance that allows for the warmth to spread northward here over the eastern states. As we reach towards Thursday here on April 18th, we don't really have a strong low pressure system anywhere, but we do have some severe weather happening across the Midwest and Plains here, uh, and then still some precipitation over the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. So definitely a very, very interesting pattern. We could tell this cold air is spreading eastward though, and by Friday, it's advancing even further towards the east, where I would say this trough is centered somewhere between the Plains and the Midwest. So definitely... Uh, a very, very interesting pattern. There's still a lot of warmth to go around up the East Coast here, but we see this warmth for the West, which indicates to me that we will see this cold air fully uh, take over for these Eastern regions. And by Saturday, that's becoming uh, very clear uh, that that will be the case. Again, a trough, pretty, pretty wide stretching here over the Plains, Midwest, and now even the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Uh, we do have some interesting storminess developing for the south central states here. And this is on the southern end of that trough. And this will be for states like Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, into Arkansas, Louisiana, and even Mississippi there, where there is some isolated and scattered about thunderstorms throughout that area. Keep that in mind as we move forward. By Sunday, I would say we see the peak of this trough for the eastern states, where it's now centered over the Ohio Valley and mid-Atlantic. It will be much cooler, and generally, it's going to feel a lot cooler compared to what we've been having, which has been very warm to even hot, depending on where you're at. I think it got up to even 90 degrees here in Virginia. Uh, so yeah, definitely very, very hot compared to normal for this April time frame. It does happen, but it's considerably warm compared to what's typical for this time of year. Uh, by Monday, this trough does lift off quite a bit back up into Canada, pretty much where it belongs. Um, we see decent weather throughout the United States from coast to coast here, I would say near normal conditions. Uh, a little bit hotter here over the southwest would be the trend, uh, and a little bit more typical here over the east overall. By the time we reach Tuesday, we see things are still much quieter, no real low pressure system to work with here, but we do have some precipitation over the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley here, uh, and this will feature potentially some thunderstorm activity, if not heavier showers and more persistent rainfall over these areas. By the time we reach Wednesday here, we see that things are still about the same, although we do have some storms flaring up throughout the plains for states like Montana all the way down through Texas and Louisiana and then kind of everywhere in between. By the time we reach Thursday on the 25th, we have this kind of southern storm system. Again, no real low to work with, but there is some heavier thunderstorms throughout the Ohio Valley back through the plains here. Uh, so that is definitely something to be watching for. And then by Friday, this does reach the southeast coast. 
Meanwhile, we do have a low pressure system forming in between Wyoming and Colorado there, and this could feature some severe weather on the eastern end of things. Also, we have a low pressure system for the west coast, bringing some Sierra Nevada snowfall and then rainfall for other areas in the lower elevations. Let's check out the GFS model, see where we get agreement and disagreement. We have that strong low that moves up, uh, and then we're left with this cooler weather, some storms moving across the deeper south. But this model kind of takes us back into the trough uh, for midweek next week, so Wednesday on the 24th here. Uh, even Thursday on the 25th as well. Throughout the southeast, we have some storms around. Uh, even this model indicating some snowfall for the mid-Atlantic. Take that with a grain of salt for sure. Uh, interesting, but certainly at this range, I, I would definitely say that that is unlikely at this point. Um, we start to see a return to the warmth around the Saturday-Sunday time frame of next week, so 27th into the 28th. And it all starts with a low-pressure system over eastern Colorado. We do have a 991 right there taking place and this is forcing some colder air to be able to uh, uh, basically move southward along that west coast that creates that disbalance basically that is going to move this warmer air towards the north here in the eastern states by sunday this is becoming even more dramatic and especially by monday of that week and into tuesday uh, we have a full-blown trough in the west big time ridge in the east and this would be a return of that hotter weather here uh, for the central and eastern states overall. And during this time of year when we do have this, it's really common to see thunderstorms developing across uh, areas near that boundary. But even areas in the deeper south, we have enough low pressure for thunderstorms to develop there in that hotter, more humid weather. Now, we get one more day here for, well, we actually get two. Uh, Wednesday here on the 1st of May, we have a strong low developing over Colorado. Take it with a grain of salt if this is very far out, but... Uh, at this point, we do see some snowfall developing here for the Rockies again, which is very, very possible for this time of year. Nothing too crazy. Uh, I do expect to, if we see this strong of a low, see thunderstorms develop across the plains here to the east of it. So let's see if that happens by the next day. And it does, 992 over eastern Colorado. Uh, definitely a cold front stretching down towards the southeast of that low. And this would bring another round of severe weather, especially across the plains here and likely moving eastward from that point. So we would see another multi-day severe weather event if this occurred, but beyond hours 240, I always take it with a grain of salt. So that's why I'm kind of treating it as something that could happen, but not necessarily likely yet. Total precipitation tells the full story. Very, very quiet compared to normal out west. And this does happen this time of year. By the time it's summer, we're not gonna expect to see very much out west. So we are moving in that direction. But once you get east of the plains here, we see a lot of precipitation, especially across the northern plains, upper Midwest, areas of the Midwest and Ohio Valley, and then the southern plains through that deeper south area. We're seeing above normal precipitation, and this does reach towards the southeast as well. Uh, the northeast a little bit quieter, but I wouldn't pay too much attention to that much of a micro detail in all of this. We could see a bit more than this for the mid-Atlantic and northeast. Now, the total snowfall here, no surprise, not a whole lot expected outside of the Sierra Nevada here and the Rocky Mountain Range, and I would suspect after this 10-day period, it's going to be much less than this even, and that's just the time of year that we're in. So definitely, we're moving along towards the spring as we should, and this is fairly normal. Now, we're again using this European uh, model that is the AI one for our temperature outlook. We're going to kind of track this and see its success rate, and we might start using it more on the channel, but we see this warmth prevail in the east until this cool down comes around Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Then we're engulfed in a far below normal temperature pattern here for a lot of the east with warmth prevailing out west here. So what we see overall is a positive PNA pattern. This forces the cold air southward here in the central and the eastern states. And basically everything moves according to schedule. We see that cold last through maybe towards midweek. And then we start to see a warming trend Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And look at this. We don't really get any more cooldowns in the east. It stays warm all the way through May 1st. We have a very solid negative PNA to work with. So colder air out west. And this does the opposite. Warm air prevails in the central and eastern states. And that looks to be the pattern that we're going to be tracking moving forward. So we'll see if this is uh, rather successful midweek next week all the way through the 1st of May. This model is calling for warm to hot temperatures across the central and eastern states. So we're going to watch it very closely and see how accurate it ends up being. The Storm Prediction Center for day one, we do have an enhanced risk. 
So let's just walk through it. General thunderstorm risk for the very far northern rocky states there. And then all these light green areas over here. Uh, I would name them all off, but it would take me forever. That is where we expect general thunderstorms. Some severe weather is always possible, of course, but not necessarily expected at this point. The darker green is where we expect potential strong thunderstorms with some isolated severe weather reports. Your yellow area there is where we expect scattered severe weather to happen. So some very strong thunderstorms in there with severe weather reports within it is expected. And then your enhanced risk area for Missouri Illinois and Iowa, we do expect a little bit more widespread severe weather throughout those areas. Day two, which will be for Wednesday on the 17th, we do have that general thunderstorm risk area again in the lighter greens, that marginal risk there in the darker greens again. And then we do have a slight risk area for Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio. And that's again where we expect scattered severe weather reports. For day three, which will be Thursday on the 18th, uh, we see everything kind of shift southward. We have a very large general thunderstorm risk area again a rather large marginal risk area as well for those isolated severe weather reports. And then we even have a slight risk for a lot of the plains and Midwest, even into the Ohio Valley here. And that is again, where we expect scattered about severe weather. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Be sure to subscribe for daily weather uploads just like this one. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.